My name is Oliver Nelson Jr. and for the past six years I've been a member of the Enthusiast Press as a games writer and content creator. So video, audio, streaming, etc. I've tried to do as much of as many things as I could uh, over the past few years. My work as a journalist has been featured by publications including Kotaku, Critical Distance, and Rock Paper Shotgun. I would have had a slide for that, but all the screenshots came out blurry, so just imagine I did like a really awesome slide with all my accolades and stuff. Um, and Rock Paper Shotgun, my personal highlight is when Rock Paper Shotgun called My Peace about the gamification of the Steam marketplace and the compulsive nature of these systems, last week's best article at the time. So 17-year-old me sitting in my room writing about video games, wondering if anybody cared about what I was doing, that just blew my mind and it actually got me through a really rough patch. There we go. I've also contributed to a few games, including Ninja Pizza Girl, a parkour platformer with strong messages about loving yourself, being yourself, overcoming bullying, and family, among other things. Uh, my contribution to the game was I conducted personal interviews with the developer, and I cut them into concise segments to show really the humanity and humor of the family behind the game. And that made it, and those segments made it into the game as unlockable content. I've also begun developing my games myself, and this is my first title. It's called All Hail the Spider God. And that actually came about because three weeks out from AlterConf, while I was preparing this talk, I realized I was scared stiff of someone listening to what I had to say, listening to me talk about the friends I've lost and the people I'd seen churned by the gaming industry's endless machine and cycles. And they would disregard everything I had to say because I didn't have the experience. Because after all this time, and all of the games I've covered, and all the developers I've interviewed, I didn't have anything of my own to show. So three weeks out from this conference, I crunched for two weeks, released All Hail the Spider God last week as a free browser game on itch.io, and apparently it's been played by over 800 people and Rock, Paper, Shotgun feature that as well. So I'm really happy with how it's done as my first game, and it's probably the best thing I've ever made. So to put into context not only this talk, but most of the facts I've just spat out about myself, when I say I've been doing this for six years, I'm 18 years old now. I started when I was 12 years old with a crappy little free WordPress blog complete with a banner made in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Deathly afraid that somebody would figure out how old I was and I would be forced to postpone my dream of becoming a full-time games journalist. So when I say that in the past few months more than ever, I've considered leaving entirely the industry I dedicated my childhood to. 12 to 18 years old, think about that period of time in your life. That's Unfortunately, only most of puberty, that's high school. That's a huge part of me, a third of my life. So when I say that, that in the past few months more than ever, I have felt like I've had to leave a vital part of my identity behind, a vital part of how I saw who I was and who I was going to be, that kills me inside. It means something. This talk is titled, Why I No Longer Identify as a Games Journalist, because it's about why I no longer identify as a games journalist, and about the issues I feel face almost anyone attempting to join and stay in the games press, and by extension, the games industry as a whole. Marginalized groups suffer. OK. I'm not saying that games journalism is evil or that it should be avoided entirely. In fact, I wouldn't be here today if not for games journalism. There's a long list of creators who have had the opportunity to hone their craft and find who they were by becoming games journalists and have gone on to affect the world, if not, at the very least, the mediums that they care about. When you're in a marginalized group, though, a lot of the issues that are inherent to especially enthusiast games journalism are compounded. 
And to illustrate this, I'd like to tell a story. I have a little sister. She is the smartest person I know. And when I told my parents that, they were like, excuse me? <laughs> but she's the smartest person I know. And when we, grew, when, we, when we were growing up, she loved video games. We would play anything we could get our hands on. We ran through the campaign of Halo 3, even though we really shouldn't have been playing it, over and over and over again, just because we could. If a game caught her eye and held her interest, she almost instantly became better at it than I could ever hope to be. This is the girl I taught to play chess at a very early age and who to this day I cannot win a match against. The main, at, the main respect in which we differed was in our attitude towards games. I wanted to pursue games as a passion, a profession, and she saw it as entertainment and a hobby. I was able to, thanks to the relative accessibility and anonymity offered by the internet, pursue my dream long before I was an adult. She has found other avenues to direct her energies where I am sure in time she will blow the world away. But considering the opportunities I've had, sometimes I wonder what would happen if she too decided to enter games journalism. And to be completely honest with all of you, when I consider that possibility, I pray she doesn't follow in my footsteps. It's not because I don't think that she would do well. I think she would be fantastic. And it's certainly not because I think that in some weird, weird way, as an older brother, she might overshadow me. I don't want her to follow my footsteps because I know as a member of a marginalized group that if you are visible in the games industry, unfortunately, you have a giant target painted on your back. If you do not believe me, I challenge you to do this after this conference. Go on your phone, access your internet browser, go on your computer, and go to twitch.tv, the largest streaming platform in the world. I want you to go to the top played game and click on the first female streamer you find with view counts in the thousands or tens of thousands. I don't want you to watch her performance. I want you to watch the chat. I want you to watch the stream of comments going by where in between moments of genuine audience interaction and kindness, you will see message after message after message that says message removed. And sometimes there will be comments that slip between the cracks where you will see a stream of abuse and sexual comments and harassment that come about simply because this streamer is herself. Let alone criticizing the industry. Unfortunately, we live in a day where if you say the wrong thing to piss off the wrong group of opinionated, biased people, you face losing your career, you face the risk of losing your job if it's not games journalism, the loss of your privacy and safety, and potentially you risk your family Now this is an issue for anyone in games journalism and the games industry as a whole. But when you're a member of a marginalized group, and particularly if you happen to work for an unscrupulous outlet or boss, you have to think, with the accessibility offered by the internet, there has also become a culture in tech of expendability where everybody is seen as interchangeable. If anybody can make a YouTube channel, or a Twitch channel, or a website, and begin building an audience, why would anybody decide to hire you and deal with your issues? When I say human beings are devalued in tech all too often, I don't mean it to say that people not being paid is absolutely horrible. 
Because let's be honest, the amount of money flowing in games can be really tight. If you want to pursue your passion for a living, then you face a, feature, a future where, reasonably speaking, you're going to be eating a lot of ramen. So if you, along with other writers or other content creators, decide to make content and not get paid for it, or just pay for your hosting costs, then that's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about human beings being devalued and that the diversity and the unique makeup of every single person that makes the perspectives we see in content creation worthwhile. I'm saying that the value in these things is cast aside in favor of the end product. You need to take care of your family. You need to take care of yourself, your sanity. That isn't a priority in this industry. What matters is the next piece of content, the next game made, the next video created, if you simply want to get by. Human beings are devalued despite in an industry made of computerized products, every single piece of content we consume being a result of a human being with lives and feelings and emotions and needs. And this ties into my next point, exploitative practices can destroy lives. I don't mean exploitative as in, as in the hiring practices or firing practices, that's definitely an issue. And a lot of really smart people have covered it way better than I will ever be able to. I mean exploitative practices, specifically in self-exploitation. And what I mean by that is that there is one little word used throughout gaming that has introduced a codified set of behaviors that destroy people's lives over time. And that one little word is passion. Again, imagine I had like passion like surrounded by flames and stuff. Like, really cool slide. I don't have it, sorry. Passion drives people to lose sleep, to lose relationships and families, and the pursuit to create games and the media that we love. When you see E3 coverage, or the coverage for a major convention from the show floor, most of that isn't written at home. It's by people running to a game, running to interview a developer, and then racing back to, in a tiny booth, type up things as fast as they can. And they do this out of love. Sometimes, oftentimes, they do it unpaid because they care and because they want to impact the medium that affected their childhoods, the way they see the world. Passion drives people to do things that in any other industry or any other really set of industries would be seen as incredibly self-destructive. But for the final all important goal of the product, this is all too often not only encouraged, but lionized, celebrated. If you destroyed your marriage, your life, your family, your relationships, and your health, and you released a game that got above 90 on Metacritic, it is seen as a triumph instead of a critical failure in how we treat human beings, and that is a fucking travesty. I no longer identify as a games journalist simply because I can't. I'm confident that games are the most potentially personally affecting and personally influential medium in existence. I'm confident that games can and do change the world. So to see the people that make them possible, that make us knowing 
what goes on behind them possible. So often mistreated and unseen is nothing short of not just sad, but terrifying. We will always need games journalists, not only to promote new products, but to encourage and exhort us to do better and be better, to provide better representation, to treat people with respect whether or not they are fictional, to treat people with dignity and humanity, whether they're on the screen or behind it. We're always going to need journalists for that, to provide perspective, perhaps a perspective you can't have if you're the one developing a game 8 to 12 hours a day. And that's the key word here, humanity. I said earlier that every piece of content we consume is made by another human being. And it makes you wonder. We say never read the comments if you're in a creative field. But would that be necessary if before we typed out our next misspelled angry tirade, we thought about the person who would read it? I no longer identify as a games journalist. That doesn't mean I'm leaving this medium or the people inside it, especially the people inside of it behind. I'm going to keep creating and looking for work and fighting and speaking out because I believe someday, very soon, we're going to have a work environment where I would be proud and happy to be joined by my little sister. And the people who are going to make that work environment possible are the people listening to this talk. People like you, whether you're sitting in this room or watching it as an archive at home. So I'm just going to ask you, please, don't forget your humanity, your own, that of those you know and care about, and that of those you don't know, or might not even like. Please. Don't let people's lives be worth less, or be valued or seen as less, than the piece of proprietary software powering the latest first-person shooter. Please. Don't forget to be human and remember our common humanity. I no longer identify as a games journalist, but I'm staying here because I believe that future is possible. And we're going to build it together. Thank you.